Our text today is from 1 Samuel chapter 16, where we hear these words. Let our Lord now commend your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful in playing the lyre. And when the evil spirit from God is upon you, he will play it and you will be well. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence today, we ask that you would bless us, remind us of your grace, and open our hearts so we may believe, open our ears so we may hear, and open our eyes that we may see Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. My first call was here in South Wisconsin, St. John's Lutheran Church in North Prairie. I'll never forget the first sermon that I heard at a pastor's conference by former district president Edwin Sufo. He rather forthrightly asked us, do you trust that the word of God and the sacraments are enough? Do you believe that the preaching, teaching, and praying that you do in your office is enough? Do you believe that Christ and Christ alone is enough. We gathered together today, brothers, to say yes, knowing full well that we need help. Help from the Lord, help from the consolation of the brethren. Help is called and ordained servants of the word to fulfill all the vocations our Lord has given to us. So my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is never in vain. It may seem that we need more than these things, especially when we see Saul. Saul tormented by the evil one. Saul is one of those that had everything that the world wanted in a king except contrition and faith. Now, the evil spirit, as we know, the devil himself was tormenting him and taking over. We grieve this reality in our own lives that a persistent lack of repentance leads to the Holy Spirit leaving. Luther talks about this in the small called articles. When holy people, he says, still having and feeling original sin and daily repenting and striving against it happen to fall into manifest sins, then faith and the Holy Spirit have left them. How often do we preach this way? But this is the truth. We want to do something. Maybe it's another gathering, another extroverted type of gathering of all these people, some kind of fellowship time, something that would reach the community or maybe servant events. But maybe the word, the word is enough. We see it happening in our labor and the harvest. We start counting numbers. We've done this in our own church body. You've seen this all of Christendom, especially in America. We start counting beans. We start counting heads. We think to ourselves, half of my extended family has literally denied the faith, or at the very least are very apathetic. We start going down our list of our ministries. Six former confirmands, we will say, are not only apathetic to Christ, but have fallen prey to the alphabet soup of debauchery that we have a whole month for here in America. Five couples that I married are now divorced. Every one of the couples are living together when I start the, 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 getting prepared for marriage. And the countless times of our own doubts, our lack of repentance, and our sinful pride. The torment builds up and we act like we are the ones in control as if the word and sacraments are not enough. As Bob Newhart said in one of his skits and when he was a counselor and they came in and told them their problems, what did he tell them? Stop it. Stop it. Christ died for them. Christ died for you. And Christ has had the final victory. Christ is still on your side. Brothers, your labor is not in vain. Christ is enough. Saul had a fever of torment, and the only prescription was a man with a harp to use his golden fingers to bring healing when the evil spirit came. Behold, a servant replied, I know a guy, a shepherd from Bethlehem, 
He plays a mean liar, well-spoken, a good fighter, a good presence, and the Lord is with him. And here came David. As the Holy Spirit left Saul, the Holy Spirit had come to David. David found favor with the king, but yet it was not the beginning of a smooth ride as we know. It was a journey where David, one who could literally count numbers and tell others about it at a conference like this. I got one Philistine. Two times I could have destroyed an evil king, but I had mercy. 73 psalms written and approved by doctrinal review. <laughs> Yet the other numbers we tend not to tell, and David maybe wouldn't have told either. Adultery, loss of a child, anger at the end of his life. And it makes us all realize that when we boast, this is why we have this, when we ordain a, a pastor into the office of the Holy Ministry, and when we have an installation, we end with the understanding of where does our pastor find strength? Our pastors find strength, not in boasting of themselves, but boasting in the Lord. For all of you, the baptized, redeemed into Christ, full of the Holy Spirit, it is not a smooth ride. The devil is searching for whom he can devour. Resist him and know that your suffering is not your own. It's part of the calling, not only in the ministry, but for all the saints. My fieldwork church, when in St. Louis, uh, the pastor there loved baptisms. And I know that that's crazy. We all, believe, we all had loved baptisms. He really loved baptisms as he heart, uh, labored in the harvest in North City. And when he did this, he loved to teach about this identity this child would have, the identity of dying and rising in Christ. And he would emphasize this in the, in the service, the worship service. And one of the times that always struck me was he took that child after he was baptized, and he then put a, put a, excuse me, he put a target on its back. And he spoke to the godparents and said, this child has a target on its back, so this child needs your prayers. This child needs to be full of the word of God. You need to be there for them as godparents. And he told the parents the same thing. And I remember the crowd, the, the congregation in this inner city congregation, they understood that. They understood it because they knew this child would go through trials. They, know, they knew the gunshots. They knew the instability in the people's homes. They knew their own sin. They knew the darkness that surrounded all of them. And it is something that was a beautiful thing in that congregation because there was one older lady that always came in, and when she came in, we greeted her. She would always tell us, I need my Jesus to be with me today. Mm -mm. And I wonder, in that baptism specifically, how long did that family keep that target on that child's back? Did they have it there when they took pictures? Maybe they should. Maybe it would be a reminder that we need to strive and toil in this life. We need to realize that this is not a smooth ride. Maybe sometimes we make it sound like this. Make it sound like this is what life will be. As Paul tells Timothy in chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 4, be an example in speech, conduct, and love, and faith, and impurity. He is telling them it will be a battle. It's going to be hard work and requires the word of God being enough. Prayer being enough to make it holy. For our pastors to devote themselves to the public reading of the scriptures for us not to neglect the gift given to you by the laying on of hands and to watch our doctrine because when you preach and teach the salvation of those who hear, it matters. We see the fever of the devil. But the only prescription is not golden fingers playing the harp, but nail-wounded, bloody hands submitting to the will of the Father. Behold, we will say, we know a guy who knows you by name, knows your people by name, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We see a fever of the old Adam, and we need a prescription, which is the shepherd from Bethlehem, the one spirit of the Lord upon him, and the one who has found favor with the Father. Brothers, word and sacrament is enough. Preaching, teaching, and prayer is enough. And Christ is enough. My beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. In the name of Jesus, amen.